What do you think of when you think about the power and potential of your hormones, both for good or for bad, for your health, life, and birth? My guest today is going to talk about birthing high, the benefits of our natural flow of hormones, and how our over-medicalization of birth practices can cause problems for babies and society, a discussion that is just so important to consider how birth matters in our lives. Hi, I'm Deborah Pascali Bonaro, founder and director of Orgasmic Birth and host of the Orgasmic Birth podcast. I am so honored today. My guest is Maria Lembo. She's an Argentine home birth midwife with 24 years of practice, 4,300 assisted births, and I'll say that again, 4,300 births. She's a TEDx speaker, a translator of midwifery books, spiritual midwifery, and she's a translator for our documentary, Orgasmic Birth. So if you're listening to, or watching our subtitles in Spanish, you know that Marina did them. She also helped translate Ina Mae Gaskin and the Farm Midwives Birth Story. She's founder and twice president of the Argentine Association of Independent Midwives, and she led the lobby to preserve home birth practices in midwifery regulation and started a national birth centers network initiative. Marina is a midwifery professor and technical expert. She is a national and international lecturer of human rights and childbirth activist, a homeopath, a mother of two born at home. And I had the great pleasure of reconnecting with Marina this June in Bali at the International Confederation of Midwives Congress, where I listened again and was so inspired by her passion, wisdom, and activism. And I know you will be too. Welcome, Marina. It's so great to see you again. It's a pleasure to be here with, with you and all people listening there. <clears throat> well, I have to say, when I saw your title, Birthing High, I really loved it. And I thought, I have to ask you, what is Birthing High? Well, many people, most of the people doesn't know that uh, we inside, no, the, the uh, whole person, we are a laboratory like the pharmacy industry, but inside of us. So when you tell and share, inform people, especially pregnant people and their uh, family and friends that they can produce a lot of healthy hormones. And also to be in a, to, to know about the stress hormones as well, no? Everybody is interested in have a healthy pregnancy, uh, a healthy birth or delivery and also postpartum care. And many people think that they can get that in all the machines and pills and uh, checkups. But in fact, when when I'm providing prenatal care or being in touch with doulas, for example, also with other colleagues, uh, I explain the importance to to um, uh, trigger these uh, pleasure hormones because when we do uh, like uh, activities that we um, um, enjoy a lot and when we relax we are uh, re we are releasing these healthy hormones in our bloodstream no so people <clears throat> doesn't uh, people don't know that they can for example uh, hugging somebody for 20 seconds they trigger oxytocin and oxytocin it's a uh, uh, very powerful hormone that can stay the blood pressure in healthy levels and oxygen levels also. And we want a pregnant person 
with a normal blood pressure, with normal levels of uh, glucose. Also a baby having a, um, a good stream of blood in the placenta <clears throat> and also the, the precise tone in the muscles in, in, the, in the pelvis. So oxytocin and adrenaline are like, um, they are like um, pulsing, no, they, 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 on one side, not like the stress system and the anti-stress system. So uh, <clears throat> if we don't want problems no, in pregnancy and birth, we have to put special attention in these healthy and powerful hormones like oxytocin. Also in, in many labors, you can see women, for example, in moments of um, um, <clears throat> resting, no? And they rest sometimes being uh, in, in an upright position, standing up, no? Hugging around the neck, the doula, the partner, the midwife, or the grandmother, some friend there, somebody. And, and that hug, or for example, this kind of slow dance, no? These, these moments of resting, they are releasing a lot of oxytocin that they don't need these artificial hormones through an, an IV, for example, that it's not intelligent because the natural oxytocin, it's intelligent and the artificial oxytocin is not intelligent. And the intelligent hormone preserves also the state of the conditions of the baby. <clears throat> so, for example, um, having sex, if you enjoy it no, and, and, and you uh, want to or masturbate yourself, um, doing a sport, uh, um, a physical activity, swimming, especially swimming because the contact with the water in the level of the kidneys and the nipples also release a lot of um, <clears throat> anti-stress hormones. Also doing activities with the hands, activities like um, uh, using colors and painting mandalas or knitting or uh, cooking, for example, playing, playing with kids, with the children, like staying in the present when you're watching a film there and not uh, looking at the WhatsApp <laughs> chat. No, I'm here, here, uh, <clears throat> leaving space to be in the nature, to also sometimes uh, when I notice some pregnant women or trans people, pregnant people, are a little bit um, like uh, worried. Sometimes I suggest to go to a park, for example, and to hug a tree. They 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 tell me that it's a little bit like uh, uh, shameful. Uh, uh, that they feel like. Uh, in a situation uncomfortable because everybody is watching them hugging the tree, but the sensation there, it's like an immediate um, um, feel of uh, calm no? and, and peaceful. So people, when they get to know that we can activate all these powerful, healthy hormones, it's, um, very uh, useful, no? For example, if you had a bad day, no? Or or you are exhausted, well, you know what things can help you to trigger and to release and uh, you produce yourself these healthy hormones, like praying, for example. <clears throat> Neurosciences are studying, for example, how to um, produce uh, more oxytocin praying or med meditating or being there in the nature. Sometimes um, 
also the contact, the skin to skin contact, no? also releasing these hormones of uh, um, relaxation, no? and also how some things like, for example, breathing faster, not drinking water or being quiet, that uh, situations trigger the stress hormones. So for example, if you want to keep the stress down, you have to drink a lot of water, keep you, your body hydrated. Many doulas, many midwives do it uh, only by watching, no? with a non-verbal communication. You just see the, the person in labor with the tongue on the dried leaves and, and you offer water. But in fact, what we are doing uh, hydrating somebody is keeping the adrenaline low. The same with the movement. We know that uh, moving freely during labor helps to open, widen the pelvis and helping the baby to, to flex, um, to bend, no? to enter in the center of the pelvis. But the movement uh, burns the the excess of adrenaline no that those are like simple things and also the skin to skin contact when we rub somebody somebody's back when when the back aches during labor sometimes or when the baby is getting uh, deeply down in the pelvis we are also releasing these hormones that um are like painkillers natural painkillers but also we are uh, activating these other hormones of of more oxy oxygen, um, uh, um, heartbeat normal. Um, so when when people know all this inner laboratory, they start feeling like confident, confident regarding the birth, confident regarding their. Uh, capacity no, to, to give birth in a healthy way. And also, as I was saying, there are a lot of um, practices, for example, in hospital that they, those these practices, um, uh, they, they don't allow this uh, natural and healthy and powerful hormones that, that, that prevent problems because everybody thinks about a c-section or a baby uh, stuck that doesn't get in the pelvis or the the um, uh, the pain no like the the fantasy of a, the a, a huge pain that you cannot uh, deal with but when they get to know that dancing hugging kissing uh, touching having uh, a contact with water, meditating, or for example, some techniques of breathing in labor or uh, hypnobirth, things that uh, help you to, to get in another state of mind. All those things almost warranty that everything's going to be okay. So for me, the to discover the... Um, the psycho neuro and endocrine in immunology is it was like a a, a big um a information that helped a lot of people uh, to understand also the importance to sleeping properly to go to sleep early don't stay not to stay till very late at night, awaken or doing things of their work and you know, to to be more organic also in their um, respecting the light and, and the night time because during the night, the body, it's like um, doing like gardening when you cut the, the parts of the branches of the tree that that are like, uh, old and without leaves so at night it's very important to leave the body the um, 
the energy to eliminate and cut and clean all our uh, like the highways, no, the the roads of our body. It's very important the liver to uh, to um, eliminate the, the toxics of of the body of the the day, the functions of the physiological functions of the day, and also it's very important to uh, respect the times uh, of the of sleep. Also so much knowledge and i love that you call it because i had never heard it before psycho neuroendocrine immunology right um as a science that helps understand the power and the potential of hormones and you really explained so well um why our bodies and i love how you say that the body is that laboratory right and we're always producing and creating these hormones that help birth to go gentler and easier and i know i get asked all the time you know is home birth safe and i'm sure as a home birth midwife all these years you hear this but do you feel that these the hormonal flow is in the way you presented it is part of what helps keep home birth safe or birth safe? Well, here, for example, <clears throat> in Argentina, um, births are highly medicalized. So, and and at hospitals, no people are suffering a lot of routine uh, practices and procedures. And for example. Uh, it is uh, something of the last perhaps 10 years that people had the right by law to be together with somebody uh, like um, the couple, a partner, um, a friend, uh, or a relative. And for example, in the, the C-sections, they can't they, they can be together with somebody. So all those things are uh, helping all this adrenaline and stress hormones to be in big uh, amounts, no? in, in big concentrations. Um, so we know there's stress and the... The level of oxygen, oxy, oxygen, it's going to be less, and the, the baby then it's going to have uh, the fetal heart tones down, and then everybody is running. Or, for example, the cervix uh, keeps um, rigid and uh, closed, and more pain, and they they don't allow uh, people to drink or eat during labor. So as we were talking about, if you drink water, you are going to keep the adrenaline down. But at hospitals, they don't allow people to drink water. So they are going to be full of adrenaline and with poor oxytocin. <laughs> so many people are um, choosing for a home birth because in that um in that scenario no in it's their own environment so they can be uh, wherever they want they can change places rooms go to the toilet stay there and they are the the like the the owners of the place and we are uh, uh, we are there like we are being in invited no so as it is not our house they are in control of their place uh, also it's full of their the, the smell of their place the the, the furniture um, their their clothes some families are with their children there because there's something that worries a lot many people during labor how are my kids uh, are they fine uh, are they being well cared no and so when they are there they, you are 
and without all those worries that tension you, tension your body, uh, and reflects on on the physical no? uh, level. So home birth for many people uh, allows this allows these hormones. You know, when they want to rest, they rest, and also with these intelligent hormones. When a labor it's being like too heavy for the pregnant person or for the baby, these intelligent hormones slow down. So when the, when they the the the, the themselves in this um, wisdom, um, instinct wisdom, you know, the hormones doing their job, what they can uh, identify if the process is being too much for both for the pregnant person or for the baby. And sometimes there are some people that in labor need a moment of several hours of resting time. But in the hospital, they don't allow that. So they don't let you drink, don't, they don't let you eat, they don't let you be together with somebody, they oblige you to be lying down instead of helping uh, or suggesting you to move. So your body is full, full of stress hormones and then the extra practices no over you the breaking the membranes pushing very early uh, and they don't allow these moments of no contractions perhaps no but after that when the person has recovered that it's not only the um, physical aspect as labor also um uh, has to do with the psychological aspect and also how the family is going to change, how your life is going to change, uh, breastfeeding or taking care of a, a, another uh, person, little person. This uh, psycho, neuro, endocrine, immunology also detect, recognize that those aspects if if you are not like uh, mature no in in your um, mental state or you don't feel you are ready or prepared to breastfeeding or um, now no being a, a mother or a trans father sometimes the, these hormones slow down and give you the space no your time sometimes under a shower, you're with contractions, you get a shower and you organize you know, all these thoughts in your mind and and then the contractions start again, you know, like um, pushing you to continue the labor. Also the, um, uh, the, the feelings, no, the, I, there are some people that during labor, they, they cry, they shout, they uh, uh, talk with somebody and um, feel bad for some situations. They, they, they need to talk about those things sometimes uh, in, in, in the couple, they, they need to clean, no, like this, uh, the, the soil uh, and and the hormones uh, know that and leave also the space so it's like for me it's like many animals no you can go to the zoo and you watch the panda or the I don't know the tiger and also the 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 vets know that the pregnancy and labors in the zoos are difficult, but when they are at their natural environments, everything goes fine. The pandas get pregnant and the pandas are born and everything's fine. <laughs> they aren't in, in these uh, difficult challenges of, of um, let's make the elephant get pregnant in the New York Zoo, for example, no? It's, uh, it's different how it works but 
for example, in some countries, for example, Latin America. In Latin America, uh, being out of the hospital is related to uh, poverty. It's related uh, to ignorant people, uh, scarcity of resources, uh, being negligent. So it also depends on the culture. For some cultures, being out of the hospital is is seen like um, a, like you are uh, socially in a level that you are like in very bad quality, the, the style of life, no? It's uh, so poor. But um, when they also understand these things, no? Like um, birth has worked for thousands of years in, in the history of humanity. Um, and they understand that at hospital, they are going to trigger these stress hormones and that and that doesn't help at all uh, they start no like uh, being more open-minded yeah so important marina it's so you've given people a lot to think about in how the hormones can flow optimally and all the things that create stress to consider where and with whom they give birth but i know you also talk about the baby because the baby's also right having an experience with the hormones and how does birth make a difference to the baby in the hormonal state that they're welcomed in well, there are a, a lot of things, for example, the immunology state that everybody also is worried about the baby, the infections or the breathing transition or what if the baby needs attention and, and all that. Uh, and again, if we uh, respect and preserve these hormones during pregnancy and especially uh, during all the those hours of labor, the baby is going to uh, regulate the temperature in a different way. People in general don't know that um, the cold temperature can make the baby uh, use oxygen to keep keep itself like warm. So if the baby use oxygen, it's going to have perhaps some breathing problems. So some very simple thing is to keep the baby skin to skin contact, naked, naked skin contact with the person uh, who has delivered the baby or some other person, but skin to skin contact release oxytocin and oxytocin helps to regulate the temperature levels. Also um, the prolactin, people think that it's a hormone that appears suddenly uh, to produce um, human milk only at that moment. But prolactin is also released during labor and prolactin helps to um, mature the 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 last details of the um, um, lungs. Uh, so the prolactin helps to do the the last uh, work on to prepare the lungs. So all these um, hormones are linked. Prolactin is linked with oxytocin and also is linked with endorphins and also is linked to adrenaline in the in the precise levels. And, and they mm, work together and uh, they, they are like um, doing feedbacks, no? one, one hormone to the other. So you, if you, you want a baby that uh, breathe, to breathe properly, you may leave this oxytocin and the prolactin work during labor in, in the moment when the push is, comes. So then the, when the baby is born, it's not going to have problems to breathe because could produce this, this prolactin. It's not going to have 
like temperature, uh, these regulations, because it's going to be skin to skin contact and also um, full of this oxytocin. The body that is in contact with a baby with this intelligence can lower the temperature, its own temperature to heat the baby or it can uh, um, uh, like um, cool the baby, no? It, it can make, make the temperature high or low in, and in that way, as the baby is skin to skin contact, the baby also is regulated by the other like body, no? Um, also, many people mm, are like uh, worried about that who mm, checks the baby uh, transition and how do you know if the baby is fine and they think that you have to take the baby run away and start connecting the baby to a lot of wires and 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 lights or or um, alarms and if you don't want to have problems you have to respect this also adrenaline at the pushes but the spontaneous adrenaline only at that moment because the adrenaline helps the 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 prolactin and also these endorphins make the baby to uh, dilate the lungs and also dilate the pupils no how do you call yes, them the pupils the eyes uh, and um, and this helps the baby to do this eye contact with the other person that that eye contact also triggers more hormones and helps the um, the interest to latch and to produce milk so and these hormones also are um, producing um many substances of the immune system so you, you have everything there <laughs> the baby is being like more protected it's going to breathe without any problem it's not going to have like temperature regulation problems it's going to feed uh, early and breast milk is it's going to release properly and everything is like more simple, no? Uh, make make things uh, easier. Taking care of a newborn, it's a tough, tough, tough uh, work. Anybody who have had a, a, a child knows that. So if you can... Um, get all the benefits of this cocktail, no? this natural cocktail of hormones, it helps a, a lot to make this work that it's really tough, a little bit easier. And also the babies uh, produce their own anti-stress hormones and the stress hormones. Babies that are stressed cry a lot, cry a lot. And when they cry a lot, they start producing a lot of like toxins to the bloodstream. No? And then again, it's like a, like a cycle, uh, a feedback of stress, no? Stress, more stress, more, 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 more stress. So when you have a, a very stressed baby, you have, again, to work hard on these hormones uh, of the anti-stress um, to, to help the baby to, like, reset. Again, the babies that couldn't get these healthy hormones in birth and in labor, because some I, I sometimes um, receive some... Uh, questions or uh, people that consult me or well I had a c-section or my pregnancy was uh, 
complicated and my baby stayed at the NICU and all that. And, and now I am like uh, ruined for my whole life. But no, these hormones are so amazing and uh, fantastic that again, if you hug the baby, if you play with the baby, if you do skin to skin contact, perhaps you don't want to breastfeed or you can't uh, and the baby is fed with a bottle, you can again, no, do this eye contact and stay there and uh, um, try to pay attention how you can trigger all these um, hormones that also repair. They, they are also like a rehab <laughs> resource. <laughs> and you can also get down all this big stress of these babies that cry and are very tense and don't sleep properly. And you can notice that they are like uh, out of the, the organic order. Uh, so perhaps what you lose in some hours or some days of uh, prodrome or, or active labor, uh, perhaps you need a couple of months no, to induce to trigger all those hormones when you lose these like spontaneous biological moments. But you can do it all the same. You can you can do that. So um I I sometimes um share with people it's like a flyer with uh with four hormones and it says sleep la sleep try to sleep seven to nine hours hug somebody, uh, give thanks. You now being thankful also triggers you these healthy hormones or be in touch with the nature, breathe, pray, sing, play, dance. Uh, well, things like that. And sometimes it's again, you know, like re uh, remind the, the, the person hears the, like the source of the healthy hormones. And if you pay attention to this, you can uh, keep uh, on what keep on the side, perhaps the cancer, um, um, risk factors of the family, or also um, autism or um, diabetes. When I uh, when I ended this uh, TED talk. And, and I talk about why is it important how we give birth and we are born. It's because these um, hormones uh, live like prints in our cells, in, in our uh, like um, uh, genes, no? in, in our DNA. And not only in, in our children, but in like six or seven, more generations ahead. So this information, we, we, we print information there and this information, this, uh, these healthy hormones are going to be with us till we get really, really, really old people. Now with these neurosciences um, and also there's another important Important role of the um, natural bacteria in in the in the bowels and and how all these um, medicines, artificial medicines and antibiotics, the the excess, no, um, the overuse of these um, um, medications also affect our um our, our bacteria yeah the, our the, microbiome yeah so important marina you gave everyone so much to think about in birthing high and how our hormones really matter and birth matters but i also appreciate your message that when 
birth needs interventions or takes a different path that healing of these hormones is always possible too. So I know for many people listening, they're wondering how can they follow you and continue to bathe as I love to in your wisdom and passion for birth? Where's the best places for people to find you? Oh, I, I'm like a disaster <laughs> with the social networks, but they can write me in Facebook or by Instagram. Um, I have an update, an unupdated uh, website, but they can write there or send me a WhatsApp. I have no problem. My Instagram has the phone number. Anybody sends me messages, texts, uh, questions also colleagues sometimes or to lecture or um, I have no 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 problem uh, to to be there and and help them and luckily the TED talk is not translated yet but perhaps this year the next year perhaps it, I hope so yeah. That would be wonderful. You'll have to let us know. So we will put all those social into the show notes. So for everybody listening, wherever you're listening to us, just look below in the show notes and you can contact Marina there. And we certainly would love to hear from you. I always love to hear your takeaways, message us both. And we thank you for joining us for another episode of the Orgasmic Birth Podcast. And we hope that you will rate and review us to help us reach more people and join us next week. Thank you so much, Marina. Thank you very much. And thank you, everyone.